Welcome back everybody, you join me for another episode in our review series. I'm Simon, behind the camera is Scott, it's minus three today, and behind me is one very, very spicy Dorito. Ooh. The FDRX7 everybody, I think you'll all agree it is one very good looking car. Extremely good, an absolute masterpiece. I think they're a work of art. Like the design in these is just unreal. They're built between the years 92 and 2002. 10 year production run, that is huge for any car. And they're incredible. Uh, powered by a 13B engine, which is a 2.6 litre twin rotor. Two turbos, so the first turbo will come in around 2000 RPM. Second one will come in around four or five, I believe, don't quote me and then it rev all the way to 8,000 RPM. UK cars, they had about 237 horsepower, whereas the imports in their many different variants had around 255. This is an import, but as far as power is concerned, it's very different. 600, 600 in a car that weighs next to nothing is mind blowing. It looks so good. <laughs> oh. So yeah, this has got 600 horsepower. So to get to that, you've got to do quite a lot of work. So this has actually got a 13B street ported engine. It's doweled and studded as well, so you can run more boost. That boost is provided by one big ass bog Warner turbo. It's got Skyline R35 coil pack conversion. It's got billet fuel rail, Link G4 ECU, lots and lots of stuff. V mount up front, so you get the intercooler at the top, radiator, a kind of a V angle underneath. And because it's street ported, it sounds like an RX7 should. It sounds like it's struggling to idle. Um, I'll do an impression for you. That's how it sounds. You'll obviously hear that when I start it. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds unreal. A very angry bee. Right, that's enough looking at it. I guess it's time we give it a little spin a rooney. <laughs> on it. Generally I don't like these um, because when you start using them in anger i.e. a track day or even racing uh, because of the material they're made out of the caliper actually I'm gonna have to use both hands expands with heat so you actually lose pedal travel and pedal feel um, but normal road driving like this they seem great the pads seem great they've got a really good cold bite the clutch very bitey. I mean, you'd expect that having so much power. <coughs> Something in my throat. <coughs> yeah, so you'd expect that having so much power um, that it's going to be quite a heavy clutch. So that is what it is. That's part of tuning. The seating position in a standard one of these. I know I go on about that I've driven other stuff, but yes, I've driven other ones of these as well. Um, and when they've got a standard steering wheel, because all my length is in my legs, oh, it's stalled, it's stalled then. Because all my length's in my legs, um, I constantly kick the steering wheel. Luckily, this has got a personal wheel in it, so it's a lot smaller. Um, I think it's, I'm just measuring with my eyes, I think it's about 330 mil, I expect. So that obviously gives you more leg room. You can heel toe around it a bit more. But yeah, it's good. Steering feel. So this is on Olin's coilovers, a very, very good coilover, I must say. 
and um, feels great. Alignment's very good as well, so I'm just checking my mirrors. So you have to do that when you're driving. Um, it's on 808 tyres. I think that 808 RS is by how they grip. Not quite as good as 808 R. Well, nowhere near as good in my opinion. Um, yeah, it all feels great. Really, really good. Oh, we should probably mention the wheels. It's on Enkai NT03s, which are proper nice tire uh, wheels. Can't even talk today. Um, yeah, they're really, really a very good looking wheel. And with the tires, the suspension, it's a very, very good setup. Now, this has got a five speed gearbox, five speed manual, and I think these are only good for. 350 to 400 horsepower so we're asking quite a lot of it and putting 600 horsepower through it at the back the characteristics it's got i'd say it's got a car's limited slip diff don't quote me on that because i don't actually know for certain but it's very good it's very progressive you know what it's going to do um, can you say it's forgiven probably because once you're used to it like you know that it's just going to grab both the wheels at the same time and spin them at the same time so it is very progressive easy to control and these are the chassis they are amazing they are so good I know I say amazing all the time it's my favorite word but um, yeah the steering feel like the seat in position the power delivery the whole package and the noise can't forget the noise it's just, if I was scaffolding, I'd be fully erected. <laughs> Why are you shaking your head? I can say that. So the last thing I can't say apparently, because it will upset the algorithms. But yes, I am a very happy person right now. She's flaming. Now Scott's making faces now behind the camera, but little does he know, up here is a little little switch. When you flick that up, it actually puts you on high boost. So it was only in low boost then. And even then it's like a very angry Dorito. See what it's like on high boost, Scott? Just give it a little So first off, appearance. Ooh, it's nine out of 10. Look at this thing. It looks unreal. It looks like it should be on a poster. No matter what angle you are looking at it, it's just right. This is JDM import, so bumpers are slightly different and with a carbon front lit, award-winning Enkai NT03 wheels, lowered on Olins, white, if you know me, I love a white car. This is getting all of the bits in me all like fizzy at the moment. So very, very strong nine out of 10. Like it's just a poster car, it looks insane. Usability, six out of 10. It's got a rotary engine. Now you could argue that they're reliable. I mean, they might, well, they are if you look after them, same as any engine, but with 600 horsepower, it's quite highly strung. So, I mean, are you driving along in a little white coloured pop up, up and down headlight time bomb? So that's obviously not going to score. Driving experience, eight out of 10. A little over 1200 kilogram car, 600 horsepower in it. Incredible handling. It's amazing, eight out of 10. Now, value, seven out of 10. You can pick these up for around 20 grand for an all right-ish one. This one with its mods, it's an import. Got all the right Gucci bits. You're probably looking 40 to 50 grand, maybe more now. It's hard to say, the market's all over the, all over the place, but yeah, 40 to 50 grand, I reckon is a good estimate for one like this, this level. So yeah, overall, 
7.8 out of 10. It's a very good car. It's a very, very good car. Driving, amazing. Power, amazing. Looks, it's making my region hurt. But yeah, it's the rotary bit. I don't know if it's just internet scaremongering, but I've worked on quite a lot of cars and um, when a rotary comes in, you're a bit like, oh, is it gonna break when I'm driving it? So yeah, you can't get away from that fact. But other than that, amazing. Thank you very much, Mr. Michael, for letting me drive your car.